are in Lummelunda, Gotland, Sweden. And with me here is Bo Lenander, an expert in caves and cave electronics. And uh, we have a lot of equipment here. What is it for? Uh, this one is uh, a very old one. It's made in 1985. It's a double sideband transceiver. And uh, it has got a CW transmitter for Morse code. And it has got also uh, an automatic transmitter for uh, giving reference signal from the cave to be found on the surface. We locate point on the surface that is right above an unknown or a, an interesting point in the cave. And um, this uh, electromagnetic device works on 32 kilohertz. Here is the electronics batteries. And this is the antenna. Here we have smaller antenna for use up on the surface. And this is a, a small ferret antenna rod to use for shorter distance in the cave. We have a special little level here so we can accurate place it and uh, orient it so it's vertical. Yeah, and you we use this to like uh, position uh, places in the cave so that we can we can actually drill holes into the right place, or we can do a rescue of the ca cavers if there's some kind of problem. Or what, what's the use of this? Exactly that. Um, one use is to locate points of interest in the cave, lift them up to the surface and be able with high precision GPS devices uh, have a correct map of the cave. Cave mapping, especially when you're diving through sumps, isn't easy to do. And uh, you can uh, make a uh, oh, map as good as you think you can do there, but uh, to correct it, then we will have remote places in the cave, easy to find. We name them as fixed points, and then we can locate such a transmitter there and find it on the surface. Just to stretch the cave map to have it correctly positioned in relation to the surface. Right. Um, and what is, what is this component? Looks like a gun or of some sort. Is yes. it a laser gun or something else? You know, where are that? <laughs> yeah, it's a receiver. Batteries, correct position now. Yes, it's so beeping. That is uh, the transmission from uh, a beacon that can be placed in the cave, like this one. Here. We have a ferret rod with a winding and electronics, batteries, and it's transmitting electromagnetic pulses. And now it's transmitting. Duh, 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 duh. That means for me up on surface, it is hanging. That means that uh, the place is it not in the water, it's uh, in air in the cave. If uh, a diver has it uh, in the water, then it's heavy there, light there, it's flowing up and be standing like that in the water. Yeah. And then we can hear doot, doot, doot. 
Yes. Yeah, so the si signal change is based on the attitude. So, um, the range of this device is uh, something like 150 meter. Again, e even through rock. Through rock. And um, this big antenna, together with this transceiver, we have reached 240 meter. This is a high power transmitter re and receiver that we use to take precision positions in the cave. When uh, we are in water, it's flowing up, it's standing vertical automatically. So I have the magnetic field vertical. If they are in uh, air, it's hanging, also vertical field. Here we can set the message. When they are swimming with it, we have OK, and then dip, dip, dip. I know that they are swimming. We are coming to a special point of interest. Then they switch it to fix, and then it do, do, do long signals and then I hear that on surface I take the position and uh, then I measure the depth also to this point and uh, when I'm ready I can transmit the signal so and the depth you measure not through the uh, strength of the signal but rather the direction the direction of the magnetic field okay in a special distance from the zero point. Yeah, so you go to the zero point and then First. you go to another point, a Until particular distance. Until the magnetic field is leading 49.5 degrees. Okay. And then the distance from that point to zero time two, that will be the depth down to the transmitter. Uh -huh, that's interesting. And uh, when I'm ready, I fire this transmitter it's a transmitter also inside. And then this one is green lightning, like in a disc. Ah, so it's two-way communication. Flashing, flashing, it's a receiver here, listening for this. Yeah. And uh, when this is green, they know down there, he's ready up there, we and, take and, it. And does it have an emergency setting that, that if you're in trouble? It has an emergency setting also, SOS sending a SOS signal yeah and another setting that is delay when the divers go down they have a special uh, information for the surface personnel uh, latest time out uh, time of alarm and if they are in the cave and uh, they find out oh, it will be hard to get out that time but uh, no problem we have only a problem of time and then they set it on DLI and then I hear do did it do did it do did it do did it the letter D for delay and uh, that's a message to the surface personnel and they know well, the time limit for alarm will be passed, but no problem. They have said it's only a timing problem. So we have used this very much up in uh, the mountains in the Burelven cave. And also, he, I mean, you use this this equipment overall here in Lund Lunda as well. Yes, actually, the drilled holes down to the cave now they. There are three holes located by this device and uh, two holes by this and one by this one. And, and we never missed a place. We, we always, Find when, 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 when you drilled, yeah. there was always the right place. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is my best direction finding receiver. And uh, if the 
magnetic field goes straight up. Uh, here it will be leaning out so, 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 and all the way around like this. I search a place above the transmitter where we have the vertical field. And then here there are many windings and uh, when the magnetic field is just touching, not going through, it's just touching, then we have very, very low signal, almost zero. And uh, so we have maximum signal. This is not good to find uh, the position above. But uh, I do like this. And when I'm coming to the right position up on ground, where this level has got its bubble between the market, and I hear, hear zero signal at the same time, then I know vertical field. So, check it here also, the same situation. That's the ground zero right above the transmitter and then I'm walking beside until I have the next level the bubble between the markings and then I have got to the position where I have the direction of the magnetic field in 49.5 degrees leaning and from that place to the ground zero, I measure with a measuring tape and take that measure time two, and then I have the depth of this transmitter underground. So it's very easy. But you can, of course, make that for all angels and so, but uh, then you must calculate, and it's rather complicated. And it's not easy to do that in a rainstorm, but take time too. That's, you can make it easy. 8.5 meter, 17 meter deep. Simple. And what's the ma maximum depth that you can use this devices? I have uh, put this uh, vertical on a house. And I have tested up on ground, and I have heard with this receiver, I have heard the signal from that uh, in uh, about uh, 500 meter distance. But uh, we know that uh, through the rock, uh, it's around 250 meter. That that's pretty significant. Still, that that's a that's a big cave to go through. Yeah. 250 meters. But we have uh, one location in Sweden where 240 meter. Lulia Choro Cave up in north of Tornetresk. That's like that. But mostly we, we operate in a, oh, more like 50 meter. Like a Expedition View 11. There, in my cave. Yeah. <laughs> I found it once upon a time. Uh, in that cave we have maximum of uh, 48 meter down to the beacon in the cave. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the locations we have made something like 30 meter covered uh, with a gravel and uh, marble. Yeah. yeah, and he here in Lumelunda, it's some somewhere between 20 yeah. and 15 meters, or yes, or 20 and 10 maybe. Uh, 20 and 12, 20 and 12, something like between that. So it's very easy up here. All right, thank you. And I, I think the next step is to go and try this out on, in the actual cave. So now we are in the cave. So Ralph here has a glorious task of standing still, holding the probe in one place. <laughs> <laughs> in a cold cave. How cold is this? Six uh, degrees? Six, uh, the cave is six or seven degrees and the water is equally cold. And I like this spot because the sound of the flowing water is so nice. And we 
are about five meters from a borehole, just over here, 18 meters to the surface. And this is just for, for us to make it easy to communicate in case there's some, some problem with the equipment. We're waiting for your acquisition of the signal and then you can let us know that you found it. There it is. Yeah, we have found it. You have found it. Have Success. Found it All right. It works. Yeah, you can come back out. Very good. <laughs>